Guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I last posted. I feel like that's uh, that's just how my life is at this point in time. A lot of a lot of things have happened since my last video. I don't even know where to start. I guess the first first part is that uh, we got married. It was a really great day. It was probably one of the best days of my life, and I'm sure um, for Connor's as well. Okay, so I am going to answer a few of the marriage related questions just because we're already here, we're talking about it. Uh, let me scroll down. Okay. <clears throat> First question is How's life as a married couple been, especially with your new job? So I'll touch on the new job. Actually, I guess that was first, wasn't it? I started my new job. Should I start there? <laughs> This is going all over the place. Okay, hang on. So the first thing that happened is I started my new job, which I guess is a pretty big thing considering. You guys have been through this journey with me about studying for an ML for my MLT exam, becoming an MLT, working as an MLT, all of that good stuff. And then suddenly I kind of just dropped a bomb on y'all and went, yeah, I'm quitting. Also, bye. And then I just dropped off of the face of the earth because life got in the way. So um, to answer this really quickly, my life has been nothing short of amazing. My life has been, it has dramatically improved since I started working in my new position. I do really, really enjoy the work that I do, but on top of that, I think just the way that it affects my life, I get to work Monday to Friday, which I'm sure a lot of people kind of look at that and, and people that haven't maybe started their careers, maybe they're still in school, they kind of look at a 9 to 5 like, mm. like, I get it, I get it, but after working years and years in a hospital of shift work, working overtime and all of that, like the structure of a 9 to 5, actually I guess I don't even work 9 to 5, I work 8 to 4, but anyway, the structure of working Monday to Friday is, oh, chef's kiss, like you, you, it is unmatched, okay? Coming from a healthcare perspective, working tirelessly, sometimes 12 shifts in a row, get like one day off and then you're back for three days. Like, it is unmatched. The level of security and happiness that you feel being able to have your life in a schedule, being able to have your rest days and not have to feel overworked and not have to feel like you're letting your team down if you don't come in for overtime. Like, it's just unmatched so needless to say my life has been amazing just for the fact that I get to work the predictability is <laughs> I am a I am a creature of habit and just having the predictability of my schedule and just being able to have the time to do things that matter to me and the time to spend on people that I love and grow the friendships that I have because I am now just able to be there is so wonderful for me and like I said a 9 to 5 or whatever an 8 to 4 Monday to Friday might not work for everybody but I've been on both sides of the spectrum and I can say wholeheartedly that this kind of dynamic of work it just is much better for my mental health for my life uh, Laura Hyun asks, how's your new job and do you miss being in the lab at all? Um, and then I guess I'll answer this one as well from Kawaii Karina. How are you? Are you happier? What's your new job like? Love you so much and love your videos. Thank you so much. That's so cute. Um, I already forgot. Kika! What? I guess I touched on that already. It's great. I love it. Um, what was the other question? How are you? I am doing so much better. I feel like I have really recovered from all the burnout I was feeling. Um, not just for like content creating, but just every like I really felt like I was tired of life <laughs> as uh, Sad as that is to say I just felt like I had too much going on I felt like I didn't have enough time to rest I feel like I was missing out on all of the experiences that I wanted to experience because I was always at work It was just too much. So now I am much happier. I am le A lot less stressed. I am really enjoying my life. I'm enjoying spending every single day with my best friend and just chilling, having a good time. Um, do I miss my job? <clears throat> I would say that, um, well, if I'm going to be honest, 
I definitely don't miss being on the bench at all. I will say that I miss the actual job, but not working the job. You know what I mean? Like I like, I like, and I miss the thought of what I used to do, but I don't miss actually working, being on the bench. I miss, I think, my coworkers the most. But I will say that because I still work at the same hospital and I work directly supporting the laboratory, I'm there like every day. Whenever I have a ticket or something to work on for the laboratory, I just like, I just walk on up there. I just, you know, have a little chat. I like to work face to face with people that are having issues so that I can just be there physically anyway instead of just sitting in my office. And I think that is like kind of all of the questions about my job so I won't spend too too much on it if you guys have any questions about the specificities of my job and what I do and if this is something that you're interested in sound off down below like um, ask me any questions I don't really know what you guys want to know so if you want me to do a whole video about IT and working as an applications specialist let me know and I can do that um, but like I said I don't know what to answer if you guys don't tell me so um, yeah, if you're curious, just let me know. Um, now I'm gonna move on to, so okay, I started my new job and then I got married on a Friday in August and it was really one of the best memories of my life and Connor's life, if not probably the best, but it was such an emotional day. There were so many tears. My makeup looked bomb because I set the shit out of that thing. So none of these tears were ruining my makeup and I'm still very proud of that. Uh, yeah, it was a magical day. I feel like everything for the most part that I could control went well and anything that went beyond my control, I decided not to worry about it because that was... I was trying to have a good day and no matter what people threw at me because there were so there was a little bit of drama and I'm like yeah I'm not I'm not trying to deal with that so don't put it my way because I'm not trying to deal with it um, so I think the day itself went really well um, stuff happened that uh, people were like oh don't tell Diane until after the wedding my best friend came over the night after we got married to cut my hair because I we were going to Mexico on the Monday and I was like look I want all of this hair chopped off so she cut my hair and then she also said like look Diane I have something really important to tell you but I was told not to tell you on your wedding day I didn't want to stress you out but um I broke your sign <laughs> And I was like, oh, that was you? What the heck? I thought it was like, I don't know, people pack packaging up the stuff. But regardless, like little things like that, people were like, oh, just don't tell Diane until after because we don't want to stress her out. I feel like as type A as I am, I was probably more chill than people really thought I was going to be. Um, and I think a huge part of that is because we hired a wedding coordinator, which um, shout out to Stephanie. She is literally, literally the best best uh decision that i made i made for the wedding because connor was like i really don't think we need i'm like no 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 no. we need a wedding coordinator so she was amazing i'll put all of her info info down below if you guys are in like guelph cambridge kw or like london area i'm sure she travels all over ontario in the gta maybe not ontario but you know with a reasonable distance if you guys are looking for a good wedding coordinator she is the best the best so uh, she really made my whole entire experience literally amazing pros and cons of being married so far um, there are not too many cons that I can think of I feel like Connor and I have been together for so long that uh, we kind of know each other through and through our communication is probably the best that it's ever been so being married really doesn't feel very different than um, how it was before but like he's officially moved in here so I mean like literally chilling and vibing all day every day oh uh, pros of being married this man usually usually because he works from home he'll like cook he'll clean he sometimes packs me my lunches for work so he looks after our Shiba boy which I'll get into later um, he's just really great and a lot of people that tell me and warn me about marriage are like oh your husband won't do anything your husband won't help you your husband will just be dead weight it's like looking after another child like no I don't know what y'all are on but my husband's great my husband be doing everything like so yeah I don't know it's great and he helps out a lot and he does all the groceries um, and he I don't 
have any complaints. Uh, not too many cons. Uh, right now he's out fishing, so like we still definitely get our alone time. I'm at home with the dog today and that's perfectly fine because I actually get to sit down and, and film. And uh, he gets to go out and enjoy time with his uh, family and his friends, so being married is great. <laughs> Recommend it. Uh, how do you know that you have found the person that you want to marry from MMRJ? Uh, that's a good question. I think I think I've experienced a lot of different types of friendships and relationships in my life to kind of gauge what kind of person compliments me the most. I would say somebody that you feel really safe with. I feel like love is pictured in movies and books and stuff to be this unrealistic expectation of just intenseness of like I feel like it's explosive a lot of people feel like true love is something explosive that you feel and it's so intense and your highs are so high and your lows are so low like I feel like that's probably the love that you feel when you're having your like first love or your puppy love or something like that to me I knew that I found my person to marry when I felt that that our love was something like safety and like I said that a lot I think in in my wedding vows to him that I just like he's my safe space to like when I have had too much of the world picture this you have gone through so much you are just so overwhelmed by everything going on in your life that you just want to go to your bed and burrito yourself up in a blanket and just stay there and not move and just ow hello um that feeling is how I feel with him it's not even like he needs to wrap me in my in his arms for me to feel safe it's just knowing that i have him and being in that relationship and knowing that all he cares about is just what's best for me and our relationship and he makes me feel safe and makes me feel taken care of and he makes me feel listened to and important and just i don't know like he makes me feel safe and he makes me feel like unconditionally loved <laughs> I guess to say like uh, it's been a long time um, that we've built up to this point and uh, yeah I don't know I just I can't really picture my life without him emotions and, and, and stuff like that are very complicated to explain and uh, I just prefer to show my love through actions than talking, which is why I really hated saying my vows in person to him. <laughs> Cause like I could write it perfectly, like, ugh, the writing was phenomenal, but like to say it, like why am I crying? Why am I choking up and not being able to speak? I don't know. Melinda, one of our good friends asks, what was something that you regret doing from the wedding, from the day of your wedding? And what was one thing that you absolutely loved from your wedding day? So, um, I think a few things that I really loved that we did on our wedding day was uh, that we did our traditional Filipino money dance. I thought that was like a lot of fun. I was really happy that we got to go away for some time to ourselves and do our personal vows. I thought that was like a really special moment. We got a lot of really nice pictures and videos from that moment as well. I guess the one thing that I regret or like kind of makes me sad about the wedding days that I didn't get to spend enough time with everybody. I didn't get enough pictures with anybody other than like my husband, but I didn't get to spend really any time with anyone because we were being pulled in five million different directions for the like, you know, pictures, videos, um, the cake cutting, this dancing, this, that, the speeches, like just, it was a lot. Um, and I keep saying to everybody that I'm so glad that we had the best wedding day and I'm so glad I never have to do it again. <laughs> And I'm so glad that from now on I can just be a, like a guest at somebody else's wedding because it was a lot so um, I mean everybody says that so just make sure you prepare for that if you have like a, a pretty big wedding we had about 110 120 people if you guys have a bigger wedding there's no way in hell that you can just see see and spend time with a lot of people it's just not possible another thing that I'm really glad we did is a photo booth I'm so glad that we ended up doing that because that was something for our guests to really enjoy and we got the digital copies of all of them so it was nice to just kind of see even though I didn't get to see some people face to face and like talk with them I got to like see their pictures and see that they were having a good time so after the wedding then we went on our honeymoon which we went to Mexico I won't touch too much on that we went to Secrets Playa Mujeres uh, it was great it was an all-inclusive adults-only resort 
Uh, we went to Isla Mujeres, which was really, really fun. I will show you a few clips of how we almost died of heat stroke, but the secret beach was really nice and I don't think I got any videos there. And then we went to... I don't even know where we went for this. We went whale wa not even whale watching. We went swimming with whale sharks, which was a phenomenal experience. It was a bucket list item, which we will probably never ever do again in our lives because it was a lot. Actually swimming with the whale sharks was like, what, like two minutes, two, three minutes. And it was such a surreal experience. Some people kept asking me like, weren't you scared? This is literally the biggest shark in the world. Like, I feel like, I feel like I had an out of body experience that I wasn't even like, I could not even be scared even if I wanted to because I feel like I was just watching a movie even though I was seeing it for real. You know what I mean? The actual location, because you obviously have to go out and find the actual whale, whale sharks to swim with, we had to go 60 kilometers out from the shore. It was about 300 feet deep. Like the water was 300 feet deep. Obviously, it didn't swim 300 feet deep. But uh, it took about an hour to get there by the speedboat. And then once you got there, you were waiting in line with like 10 or 20 other boats. So, like, it was just, and then like, because we were out so far out into the ocean, the waves were so choppy. I was like, wait, you're gonna, you're telling me to swim in this? The waves were going up. Like, like I can just, just remembering it is making me seasick. Um, and, and that was like for a good, what, like three hours? I don't even know because it was like a group of eight or 10 and, and we each had to go in pairs, right? So uh, yeah, then they they ask you to like put your leg out and just kind of wait there until the guy, the guy that's helping you tells you to jump. So you're literally hanging off the side of the boat while it's like choppy like this and they're saying, okay, okay, now jump. So like, I mean, it was good. It was great. It was a fun experience. Uh, if I didn't have anything to do with the choppy waters like that, I would definitely do it again. But I got really seasick so and I had to like take the rest of the day out because I was not equilibrated back to land for a long time. So after Mexico, we came back and then we got a dog. Good morning, everyone. It is nine o'clock, nine a.m. Um, so. It's August 28th, which means we got married about like what two weeks ago, right? Yep. Yeah, we got married two weeks ago. And now we're gonna go and get a dog. <laughs> so um we are on the way to the breeder right now. Um we've been in talks with them for a few days already, so we're going to go look at one of the puppies, or I guess we're gonna look at all the puppies, but there's one in particular that we are interested in. And I guess um, I'm gonna take you guys along with me. I'm so excited to meet him. He is a Shiba Inu. We, we did a lot of research. So we are very excited to meet him. So I will bring you guys along. Which is what you hear kind of in the background we got a Shiba Inu uh, he is I guess 12 weeks old now he is a red Shiba Inu he is the biggest of his litter he is a big boy and he's growing really fast and I'm swinging really sad but he's such a good boy Nico, come. his name his name is Kiko Ichigo uh, I I named him Ichigo, not because of bleach, because everybody keeps telling me like, oh, from bleach, like no. Kiko, <laughs> Ichigo means strawberry in Japanese, and since he's a red dog and he's also a Japanese dog, I was like, that's, that's so cute. I'm gonna name him Ichigo. So we call him Kiko, but um, his legal name? It's Kiko Ichigo. And he's biting right now because he's teething. And he's a little hyper because we just woke up from a nap and we gotta go out for a walkie soon. Yeah, it's been quite the wild ride <clears throat> training him. We signed up for puppy classes. He is 
so rambunctious. He's got such a bold personality. Uh, I'll put in some videos, put in some pictures. He does have an Instagram. Feel free to follow if you want. If that's not your thing, that's fine. Yeah, we got a dog. What else can I tell you? I feel like this is uh, gone on. Oh, somebody asked me. One of my friends, Megan, says, how do you like your eggs? This is completely random, but I like my eggs medium over medium. You know, like over easy, but over medium. Anyway, um, Cheryl66 asks, what was that weird thing on your cervix? Hope you're okay. So uh, I thought I updated in my last video, but maybe if I didn't. The weird thing on my cervix, I'm still not really sure what it is. The doctors aren't really sure what it is, but as far as we're concerned, it's benign. I am supposed to get it checked yearly, even though my pap smear was negative. I don't know if that's TMI, but I'm supposed to get it checked on yearly just so that if there is any more growth or if it gets bigger or whatever, they can catch it early. But as far as I'm concerned right now, everything is good. Oh yeah, uh, I don't know why I didn't answer this, but I'm seeing a million questions. When are we going to see a little Diane soon? Uh, planning on having a baby in brackets human soon <laughs> the answer to that is absolutely not not right now uh, in the future yes that is definitely on the list but as of right now no there still has to be a lot of planning on our part um, some things I need to take care of in terms of my health that I am working on that is making the progress slower but that's fine because Connor and I are not ready for kids right now I don't know when we will be ready for kids but that is not our concern right now uh, we'll probably aim to have kids in the next few years maybe question mark um, but I'll let you guys know when we figure it out but it's not gonna be right now or anytime soon we have a baby and he's a handful so <laughs> Uh, and the last kind of thing that I'll touch on is someone asked for a home tour. Someone asked, um, how is the hunt house hunt? Will you be moving to the GTA? I actually found an office tour a while ago, like several months ago. I still haven't edited it, but the office hasn't changed that much. So I guess I'll just edit that and then post it because I'm very proud of my office and I really want you guys to see my office. But anyway, the office is my pride and joy. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll post that next. House hunting, no, we are not planning on moving to the GTA. I do not want that. <laughs> I don't think Connor wants that either. We don't want to live in the GTA. It's too busy. There's too much traffic. I don't know. Just house prices be looking a little stupid. You know what I mean? Even though financially we can buy a house whenever we want, we don't want to. Personally, I'm chill. Like, I could buy a house whenever. Not, not, not. Not in that way, like, not that I have that much money, like, I am okay to start house hunting whenever, but he wants to hold off on it until, I guess, the market cools, or, I guess we're just, the point is we're not in a rush to buy a house because of the place that we have right now, it's really great, the rent is really inexpensive for what we get, it's a townhouse, plenty of space for the three of us, and, uh, I think he just kind of, I think I shouldn't say he like we both want to take advantage of this opportunity for as long as we can so that's another thing that um, is in the plan for having children like we want to I want to have a house before we bring a child into this world um, I think having a child in this house right now would be a little too cramped albeit I'm sure it can be done but I just don't want to and I think that's fair I want a house with a fenced yard for Kiko I want enough space I want three bedrooms I want two a double car garage like there's a lot of things that I want in a house I'm just not willing to pay this these extreme prices for when I just don't feel like it's worth it like I'm not trying to buy a house that's a million dollars when it's really worth like five or six hundred thousand and I know the prices probably will never get to the way that they used to be and that's fine but I'm just with these interest rates and those prices like Girl, I'm fine. I'm good. Like, I'm <laughs> living life right now. We don't need to worry about it. And uh, when we feel like it's a good time to buy, then we'll buy. But now is not a good time, in our opinion. And I'm just not in a rush. We're just not in a rush. Now that my life has flipped 180 and I just feel so much better and I feel like I'm not burnt out anymore and I actually feel like I want to get creative and do all of these things that I just have been meaning to do. Like, I feel like... 
I feel like I can actually do that now so I would love to share keep sharing my life on the internet with strangers because that's a normal thing to do anyways I've been rambling so I'll see you guys in my next video which is hopefully soon <laughs> and if it's not please don't kill me but anyway you can follow me on Instagram uh, if you guys want to keep in touch or see what's going on in my life I don't really post there too much but I do post on my dog's Instagram like every day because why not anyway I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Thank you.